night band. All right, looks like we're going. All right, hey everyone. Uh, hopefully you're in the right place. My name is Mike Anello. Um, I've had a Drupal problem for about 11 years. Uh, um, so today we're going to talk about uh, configuration uh, system uh, basics for Drupal 8. It's definitely basics. So um, if you are using the Drupal 8 configuration system, some of this or all of this may be reviewed. This is really geared towards folks who are aware that Drupal 8 has a configuration system and haven't quite made that leap to using it. Um, I will do some comparisons back to features for Drupal 7. So if you're comfortable or familiar with features of Drupal 7, you can kind of make that mental jump from uh, features to Drupal 8 configuration system. Um, and if, based on what I just said, this is not the session for you. I will not be offended if you get up and leave. So uh, I don't want you to, to waste your time sitting here if this is not if you're not going to get anything on it. Um, so a little bit about me. I have um, a small a training consulting company. I uh, about 50/50. Um, I have one of the few long-form Drupal training programs around. Um, this is the only part where I'm going to advertise, so I'll shut up after this. I promise. Um, but it's one of the things I'm proudest most that, that we've done. Um, it's a 12-week online program, three half days a week. Uh, I'm a little sweaty because I just ran back from my apartment because I had lab hours with my students. Um, so four hours a week, we fire up the go-to meeting and we have lab hours for our students and that's where I just was, so sorry if I'm a little out of breath and perhaps a little shiny. Um, but the other half of our business is consulting. Uh, and we build sites, we do project coaching, we help development teams make sure that they're building sites the right way. Um, and it's from that aspect of the business that I think I have a pretty good... You can absolutely close the doors, yeah. Yeah, lock it from the outside. That's the way I roll. <laughs> yeah, no worries, thanks. Um, you know, actually working in, you know, with clients, seeing real world things, I'm never comfortable teaching something until I feel like I've got a really good handle on the best way to do things or, or best practices. Um, so that's a lot of what you're going to see today. Towards the end, I'll have a little section on tips and tricks, and those are based pretty much on my experience with you know, working with this with actual clients. Um, yeah, all right. So uh, my username is Ultimike. I'm Ultimike on Twitter, Drupal.org, pretty much everywhere. Okay, so uh, objectives for today. Make sure we understand the basics. You know, I want everyone to be able to walk out of here and, you know, have a, a pretty firm grasp of the big picture of how Drupal 8 configuration system works. Um, comfort with some common system workflows. We're going to do a couple of, um, a couple of demos, a couple of live demos. Uh, just so you know, I also, I use these exact same slides for a full day workshop as well. So there's gonna be some stuff in here I'm gonna skip over. I actually taught this full day workshop yesterday in this room um, at this time. So, um, so the first thing we really wanna um, uh, kind of wrap our heads around, and this is a big difference if you're familiar with Drupal 7 features. The Drupal 8 configuration system is all or nothing. When you export configuration or you import configuration, you're not picking and choosing, right? In Drupal 7 with features, you create multiple features for your site. You may create a feature that held, depending on how you organize your features in Drupal 7, that maybe held all your content types, or held all your views, or held all your permissions and stuff. Um, the Drupal 8 configuration system is very different, where it is one big button that is import all or export all. Um, the reason for that, or the main reason for that, is because there's a lot of interdependencies when it comes to the configuration system, um, when it comes to Drupal in general, for that matter. Um, those of you, again, who are familiar with Drupal 7 and features, you know, you can remember if you selected a content type, you'd also get a bunch of base fields, a bunch of field instances, maybe a text format. Those are all those dependencies kind of whoop, coming in. Um, it's difficult to manage those. Um, so in core, it's, it's basically all or nothing. Um, and it doesn't seem like a big deal until you kind of, the rubber hits the road and you start using it and you realize that if you're not careful, it's really easy to lose stuff. Um, and that's one of the big things that we're, you know, we're gonna 
talk about here is how do you recognize that you, if you perform an action, you might lose something, how can you avoid that? Um, and what we're going to find here, um, you know, hopefully in the next 45 minutes, is that a lot of, a lot of working with a configuration management system is less technical and more process oriented. You have to have a good developer workflow process or processes in place in order to really be successful and not shoot yourself in the foot um, you know, by running a config import. <coughs> All right, so some quick review here. Um, this the Wi-Fi is not connected. Okay. That's going to annoy me. We're going to ignore that little bouncy thing. Um, hopefully we all know Drupal database stores two types of data, content and configuration, right? So anytime you go to add a node, you type in the title, the body, blah, 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 hit submit, that's content, saving your database. Similarly, anytime you go to, I'm sorry, do you mind, I, 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 I'm really distracted by that, do you mind? Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 let me just, um, let me force quit it so my calendar doesn't show up in the recording. There we go. Okay. <laughs> there, you and I can hang out because I'd be the same way. Um, similarly, if you add a field to a content type or any entity, you know, you go and you add a field type, you name the field, you select the widget, you select the formatter, you hit save, that gets stored in the database as well. So, you know, one of the challenges that we have in Drupal is that the database is both content and configuration. And sometimes it's hard to tell the difference, right? Menus are configuration. Menu links are content. Vocabularies are configuration. Terms are content. So there's a lot of, even you know, within you know, cross content configuration, there's dependencies there. Um, all right. Also, and kind of on the other side, the kind of the first developer workflow, and this is something I'm a big proponent of. Ideally, you should be working on your local, right? Anytime you're making a change to your site, and I'm biased, this is an opinion, um, I don't care how small it is, I am a proponent of, you make that, you know, I don't care if you're moving a block, I don't care if you're changing the slogan, you do it on your local, you make sure it doesn't screw anything up, and then you use the appropriate process to move that up through your chain of, Dev, test, block. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is predicated on this notion of developers should be working on their local, making their changes, and then moving things up the chain. So up through dev, test, and live. Um, I use this diagram in most of the classes that I teach. Um, this is code flows up, data flows down. You should never be making a code change on stage and then pulling it into your local. That's crazy tough. Um, similarly, you should never be taking your local database and copying it up to, well, got for good production. So these tenants of code flows down, I'm sorry, code flows up, uh, data flows down. I just threw myself off the next 45 minutes by saying that. <laughs> this idea of content flows down, code flows up is really paramount to making sure we have a solid developer workflow that supports configuration management. Because as, you know, not really a spoiler, I'm sure everyone knows, the whole point of the configuration system of Drupal 8 is to get that, <coughs> get that configuration out of the database and into code, right? Because if, according to this, if the only way we can move stuff from local to dev to stage to production is through code, then we better be able to have a way to get configuration into code. And that's the configuration system. That's what that does. Yes? Are these slides available so that we can download them somewhere? I'm going to put them on that campsite. OK? Actually, it's now, what's your name? Martha. Martha, it's your job to remind me at uh, 1.45 or uh, whatever time. I have to 1.45, right? No. That would be really, wow. I have to talk a lot faster. 2.15, I guess, right? 2.15. How many people do, how many people abide by this? Like, like a religion. <laughs> yeah, it's important. It's important. Okay, so obviously, you know, if we, you know, if we didn't have a config system, and we wanted to make a config change on our local, and we wanted to get that up to production, and we thought we were being clever by moving the database up, obviously that's a horrible idea. 
because production is where new content is. After user generated content go, we move the database up, you know, bad things are going to happen. Similarly, you know, you can try and be a little bit tricky, and you don't have to move the whole database. You can move selected tables, <coughs> selected rows, write some custom queries. Still, you know, you can make that in your configuration system, but not me. <coughs> Again, with the <coughs> excuse me. With dependencies, that's that's a that's a Herculean task as well. So we learned a lot with Drupal 7 with the features module. You know, features module was never designed for configuration management. That's what it kind of morphed into because we needed a tool. So you know, the fact that we used features for configuration management in Drupal 7 for so long, it was a necessary evil, right? We had to, you know, we had to do that to figure out what would make a really good configuration system for Drupal 8. Um, and, you know, we came up with what I think is a pretty good one. And it's basically a, a mechanism that reads the configuration out of the database and writes it to files. And then takes those files and imports it in. This allows us to use that up arrow, to use git to push that configuration up, all right, so this is kind of the, the big picture of the whole process. Uh, the stuff on the bottom, can figure that, uh, consider that's your local. The stuff on the top, that could be a dev environment, stage environment, production, some remote environment. <coughs> so the idea is, we make some config changes on our local. We do a, either a Drush config export, a Drupal console config export. We could do it from the UI. I mean, everything I do today is going to be with Drush. Um, and that will literally take configuration from our database and output it to a series of YAML files. Where do those files uh, show up, at, or where do they get saved? I'll explain all that in a second. Um, at that point, we're now in Git world. You know, it's, it's the same as a code change at this point, right? We're going to commit it to our repository, we're going to push it up to our remote repository, and then at the appropriate time, we're going to pull it into some remote environment. When we do our git pull, the configuration files get updated, obviously, in that remote environment. That doesn't mean just by doing the pull, that configuration is not active yet. That configuration only comes active when we do a config import. And in both this case and that case, it's all or nothing. We're not outputting one config. We are outputting all the config and replacing all of the config. That's especially important on the config import. Because if there are config changes on a remote site that were made directly on the remote site, and we do a config import, we throw out all of the config changes on the remote site and import everything that's in the repo. That's when things get, get lost. And that's what we're going to demo in a few minutes. Okay, so a couple little housekeeping things, and then we'll kind of we'll do some, some real stuff here. Um, by default, and I don't have a bullet point for what I'm about to say, and I always forget to put it in. Um, those of you who have kind of followed Drupal 8 development over the past you know, seven years now, um, there was a time, there was a, a big discussion about where are we going to store config in Drupal 8? Where's the active store? When we go to in our basic site settings and change the title of the site and hit save, where does that string get saved? There's a debate. Do we save it in files or do we save it in the database? Drupal 8 is actually capable of saving it in either place at this point. The default behavior is the database, which is similar to Drupal 7 and previous versions of Drupal 8. Therefore, we're going to call the active store the database. That's the default behavior of Drupal 8 when you install it. Um, there's some blog posts and some documentation somewhere on Drupal.org about how if you want to switch that, pros and cons of doing that. Um, I haven't actually needed to do that for, for anything I've been involved with, so um, I'm not sure how prevalent it is to do that, to be honest with you. <coughs> um, all right, the location, so the active, active is the keyword here, active storage our database. The location of the uh, YAML files that we export and import 
is called the sync directory. And um, the word sync is a, a bit arbitrary. You can actually call it whatever you want, but in most documentation blog posts, you're going to see it referred to as the sync directory. So that's the directory that the configuration files live in. You can configure where your sync directory lives in your settings.php file. And I'll show you an example of that real quick. Um, ideally, when you're building a Drupal 8 site, um, best practice these days is to dictate you're using some type of composer template to assemble the code. Um, the kind of de facto current best practice composer template is um, the one on GitHub, Drupal project slash composer template. I always forget what the name is. Um, <coughs> but by default, most composer templates for Drupal 8 um, implement a nested dock root. So again, these are kind of new best practices we're seeing with Drupal 8, um, where if you install a fresh Drupal 8 install using this composer template, your project directory actually has a subdirectory within it where Drupal is, called the web, you know, by default the web directory. Why am I mentioning any of this nested uh, dock root? Is because ideally, you want your configuration outside of the dock root. You don't want your configuration at um, you don't want there to be any chance of there to be a URL that someone could type into their browser that if you configure your configuration directory wrong, where someone can start browsing your configuration files. So the location of your configuration files should be above your dock root. And I'll, we'll, we'll see this in a minute, in a second. Okay, we talked about this. Um, a standard Drupal install. If you just, you know, install Drupal, hit standard, hit the button, export configuration, I think there's 172 configuration files with a lot of your dependencies. Um, you start adding a bunch of sites, I'm sorry, a bunch of modules, a bunch of content types, a bunch of entities for that matter, a bunch of fields. You know, I think each field adds uh, three or four configuration files alone. So you have a site with 300 fields, that's at least 300 more YAML files. So this is why it becomes really difficult to start picking and choosing them with their, with their dependencies. <coughs> um, so obviously not recommended to deal with subsets. All or nothing. When you're starting out with a configuration system, all or nothing. All or, that's what I said. Okay. All right, so we're going to jump out of this for a second. So kind of let me show you, I'm going to kind of orient you here to the demos. So I've got two sites up and running on my local. Um, and the two sites are both looking at a local Git repository as well. So I'm going to do some pushing and pulling. It's all local, so the internet shouldn't, shouldn't matter here. But, and I'll try and be really clear when I'm switching between environments because by nature, they're going to look the same because the configuration is the same and their databases are, are similar. So the tab all the way here on the left, the one that I'm using Doxel to serve, we're going to consider a local site. The tab all the way over on the right, the one that dev desktop is serving, is going to be considered our remote dev. Okay. So, and I will zoom in on all this stuff. So, go to the right site here. Okay. Is it zooming up there? It does zoom up there. That's good. Okay. So, let's talk about the configuration directory and, and, and how that works. So Depanth config, if you're wondering what that means, it's, I teach this also as part of a Drupal Easy plus Pantheon class for configuration management. So DE, Drupal Easy, Panth, Pantheon, Depanth. Okay. I would be wondering about that if I was where you were. So. <laughs> <coughs> it sounds like Depanth. Like, oh look, Depanth. Okay. Um, so this is using the um, GitHub Composer template. Um, very basic Drupal 8 install, nested dock root. So Drupal 8 is actually lives in here. Here's Drupal 8 core. So the web directory is our dock root. I have the config directory set up right here. And we can see inside the config, here's all of our YAML files. We'll see a lot more of those in a, in a minute. So how do, we, how do we tell Drupal core that our config sync directory is this one? Because I could name this whatever I want. I could name this, you know, Fred. Um, it's actually done in the settings.php. Oops. Sites, default, settings.php. Um, 
something like this. <coughs> so this is basically just a, um, a constant that is S, Y, and C, same, lowercase. Um, and here's basically where we define, you know, the, conf the config sync directory is the directory that holds Drupal root slash config. So, you know, no, no rocket science. Again, this is actually part of the composer template. So if you use a composer template, you get this, and this is a really good place to put it. So we'll leave that with that. Okay, so that's how, it's one of the first things we have to do when we decide we're gonna use a configuration system is where are these files gonna go? If you don't use the composer template, if you just download the, the tarball from drupal.org, anybody know where that configuration directory lives by default? The files directory? Not a big fan of that. It's protected, I'll say. It's, you know, it has an HT access file that prevents you, know, um, you from accessing it via a browser, but I think we all know how easy things can be misconfigured to actually allow access, so it's safest to keep it above uh, the web root. Both sites are configured the same way. Well, obviously, because they're both pulling from the same repository. <coughs> okay. All right. Um, so the next thing I'm going to show you is, so we'll go back to the configuration directory. And you know, here's our 100 and, well, there's 180 now because I've done some stuff to the site. But here's our 100 and something odd YAML files. Um, we're not really going to open any of these for this 45 minutes, but um, their text files are readable. Um, but let's actually go to, uh, here's one thing I forgot to do. Sorry about this. It's one thing I oh, forgot to look up before I finished config before I started. Three two seven six nine. Three two seven. Oh, that's small for me. That one's too small for you, huh? Okay. So here is the my local database, the Depanth database. And so in this Drupal 8 database, you will find a config table. That config table has a list of configs. Anybody want to take a guess as to how many configs are in the config table? <laughs> You're wrong. It's actually 179 because there's an HT access file, so tricked you. Yeah, so there should be 179, and actually that, well, yeah, 179. So it's, it's literally, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So all of the config in Drupal 8 is stored in this config table. Every record of the config table has a one-to-one -one relationship with the YAML file. And the name, automated underscore cron dot settings, it's even a one-to-one -one relationship with our files. So when I found this, I was like, okay, this... I'm starting to wrap my arms around this because there's now, you know, we're, we're kind of removing a lot of the mystery behind the configuration system here. Because what's really happening? We do a config export. What's really happening is we're exporting this table. You know, each record becomes a file. And then here we, you know, it's serialized PHP data and we're just converting it to YAML for the file. That, there's no other magic going on in there. That's, that's config export. Config, config export, when we do a Drush config, config export, Drupal deletes all these files. Remember, the replacement bit is important. Deletes all the files, writes a new set. When we do a config import, Drupal deletes all the records, imports a new set. There's no merging going on. There's no... We've got some extra ones here. We're only going to replace the ones that have files. It's a replacement. Yeah, maybe I'm missing something. I'm not sure if I understand that at all. If uh, when you do a okay, <coughs> config export, does it deal with only um, you know, things that are in the web uh, directory and beneath, or does it also take care of the vendor directory and other things? I mean, is the things that are, okay, I think I know what your question is. I'm missing. But let me, let me answer your question like, as far as what I think you're asking, and then you tell me. You know, another way of maybe of putting the question is where do you run and rush uh, config export in uh, 
Don't we? Or in the, the web directory. It's a trust command based on the site. <coughs> inside the web directory. Inside the document. Inside the, the web directory, yes. So, you, so the, okay, well, let me answer. I, I think I can answer your question. I could be wrong. It's entirely like 68% chance I'm wrong. Let me give, give me the 32%. Um, the things get that get saved to config are things that modules have written to save to, to Drupal 8's config system. So if there's some Symphony class, none of that config is being written to this. Because that's Symphony, that's not Drupal. So it's going to be a core module, a contrib module. You familiar with Drupal 7? Drupal 7 module development? Variable set, variable get. OK, so it's similar to that. If the module uses, and it's not variable set, variable get, but let's just pretend it is. If the module's writing out to variable set, that would be configuration. Then, uh, then in the reverse, when you comes time to want to do a config import yes. somewhere else, what is it that you already have prepared in order to be able to run on that config import? At what stage? Uh, Where's that data come? Where's that config coming from? No, you want to import into a new uh, server into the on your site. Well, that's a whole other question. Oh, okay. That's a whole other question. <laughs> Ask me at the end if we have time, or afterwards in the hall, and I'll answer it for you. Okay. <coughs> okay. Mike? Yeah. So that's so drastic, right? There's that moment in time where you completely blown away your entire config, you trying to get the table that's holding all those settings. Um, what happens when people might hit that production site in an uncached state? <laughs> Just stop. Yeah, I don't. I I don't really have. I don't know. I, I I don't worry about that. I don't worry about it because I don't work on sites that have that level of like activity. Okay. Um, I haven't seen it be an issue on the sites that I work on. Um, I you know my default answer, my wave the hand away and move on to the next question. Answer is. Caching will take care of that. Yeah, right, right. But I hear what you're saying is what if it's uncached? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'll refresh and we'll work again. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, but, 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 okay, so how are we doing so far? Basics. So we're going to do a couple like little demos here between our local and our dev. So let's just start with, uh, with the absolute basics here. And yell at me if this is not big enough. I'm trying to make them the same size, but. <coughs> okay, so here's our local, our local. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the configuration synchronization page. I'm only going to work at this first example is only on our local. Do I really only have 15 minutes left? Okay. A couple of examples then. Um, this is kind of our home when you're first using the configuration system. Um, it, it can be very confusing, but I'm going to give you one amazing tip to help you in a few, actually two, that, that will kind of clear the air on this page. This page is basically like our features in Drupal 7 page. It tells you if it's um, default or overridden, right? So this page is basically, when you load this page, it's looking at the YAML files, it's looking at that config table in the database, and it's doing a compare. If they're equivalent, this is what we see. If there's a difference, it will tell us the YAML file, or I'm sorry, let's say it'll tell us the exact configuration that there's a difference in. So let's start there. So let's do something very simple to our local site, and let's change our slogan. Welcome to Bad Camp Day 3. Day 3. Okay, super simple, could not be an easier configuration. We save it. Let's go back to that page. <coughs> okay, master tip number one. You see that yellow box? Never look at it. Never read it. Don't let it worry you. I, it, I don't know what it's trying to tell us, but it's crazy time. I'm not sure how that list of configurations gets generated. It will do more harm than good. Ignore the yellow box. <laughs> One changed. Seems pretty obvious. We made a, we made a single, single string configuration change. 
Now, hopefully we see that this is normal, right? We admit a change, so therefore, we've had a configuration change that tells us the configuration that it happened in, system.site. That's the record name in the database. System.site.yaml is the configuration file um, that this would be in. <laughs> we can see the difference. Remember, I, we said the word active. Active is the database by default, the active configuration store. So this is the value of the slogan in the active configuration store. That makes sense. We just changed it. We just hit save. It's saved in the database. It's telling us it's in the active configuration store. <coughs> staged, for me, makes no sense why this is hard coded to the word stage. So if it makes no sense to you, it's OK, because it makes no sense. Um, we have to be smart enough to know that this is our sync directory. For 98% of the use cases, this is actually our sync directory. I don't know why it's called stage. I don't have the mental capacity to go to Drupal.org and find that issue. But um, well, I, have the mental, I don't have the mental bandwidth, so put it that way. If I didn't have the mental capacity, I probably shouldn't be standing up here. Um, but you can see, stage is basically saying, this is what's in the YAML file. So before the class started, I did a config import, uh, config export, by the way. So I generated that first set of files. So this is the old. This is the new. So where this page gets confusing is import all. We have to read this. I wish the text on these buttons were a little longer. Import all from YAML files. That's what happens if we hit that button. If we hit that button, we take all of the configuration of the YAML files and we replace all of the configuration in the database. Therefore, when I hit this button, we've just lost our change. Because our change is in the database. It's not in the YAML files. So we've imported from YAML to the database. We're synced up. <coughs> Because by default, I mean, we just copied one to the other, other so they better be the same in this second. And if we go back to our, come on, really? All right, let's try it. I'll sneak up on it. There we go. <coughs> yeah, we've lost our day three. It's back to what it was before. All right, so let's try this again. Day three again. We come back, we should see the same thing. It's going to be the same difference, you know, slightly different string, nothing interesting there. But now, we're on local, and we've decided this is a change we need. This is a task, right? I've been tasked with changing the site slogan. I do it on my local, I need to get it somewhere else, production at some point. How do I move this configuration from here to there? It's in the database right now. We know from you know, my favorite slide of all time, and you can ask, where's is Bo's here, right? You can ask Bo. Bo, you've seen this a couple times, I'm sure. You know, if we want to go up, it has to be in code. That's what the configuration system does, right? It takes stuff from database to code. So, oops, let me come here. So if we import it, we lose it again, because we're going the wrong direction. We're going from YAML to database. We want to go from database to YAML. We want to go from database to YAML. <coughs> Config export. So I just got to find the right window. There we go. Clear. So I'm in my web directory. So I do a drush config. Well, I'll write it all out. Drush CEX for short. Make your jokes later. Uh, Drush can export. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm in Doxel. So ignore the fin unless you know Doxel. But it's just a regular Drush, Drush command. So it's going to kind of repeat the differences that we saw on that config sync page. Say, are you sure? We're going to overwrite that file. Um, this. 
directory looks wrong, but this is because I'm using Doxel, so ignore that. It's going to go to the right place, and we'll see that in a second. So now we can do a git status. And we can see one file has been modified. As expected, system site, git diff config, system site yaml. Right? No big surprise there if you're comfortable with diffs. You know, we're losing the red, we're getting the green. That's the change that's in code. We like that change. Git add config, git status, git commit dash m. Here's one of my little tips. This is a personal thing. I always use the word config when I'm committing config. That way when I go back and look at my history, I know what's config and what's not. Config changed site slogan, git push bad camp. Oh, I forgot the word master, so that's all that. Okay, so at this point, we have, we're clean on git, we've pushed it up. If we come back here, by nature of doing a config export, that's a copy, right? We, we copied config from the database to the YAMLs, we better be in sync because we've just copied one to the other, so we're in sync. All right, so now, based on time, <laughs> we're gonna come back here. So we've basically gotten up to this point. Our configuration change is now in our repository, but let's put it on our remote machine. So as a reminder, here's our re remote machine. I'll hit reload. Our slogan is still the old one. So I've done my push, so our change is in here. So let's pull it in. We'll do this one step at a time. So I'm going to switch over to All right, so we're on the dev site now. So I'm going to go back to the project root. I'm going to do a git fetch bad camp. I'm going to do a git rebase bad camp master. Do a git log so we can see. Here's our configuration change we just pulled in. Okay, so we're here. So if I do a reload, we haven't changed anything yet because we haven't done our import yet. But we can come over here on our remote dev site. <coughs> Man, time's fine. And see that we've got a change. So now we see the active, the database of the dev site has the old one, and the new one is in our sync directory. If we do an import, this goes from our sync directory into active. So we could hit this button, or we could come here. Is it better if I, yeah, it's probably better if I put it up top. Yeah. Or we could CD into the web directory, is that big enough for everybody? And we could do a drush config import. We're going to come from sync. I'm not going to talk about what the staging is. Um, it's a, not germane to the basics class. Do we want to import this one? Yes, we do. So we've basically just done this step. So we've taken all the configuration here and brought it into the database. Therefore, when we reload this, by nature, after you do an import and export, you should be in sync. So we'll just double check that. And by the way, there's, like, there's a little bug still in Drupal 8 where every now and then you might see a teaser view mode. Right after you do an import and export, you might see a teaser view mode configuration still hanging around. It's, it's a bug, you can ignore it. It will clear itself up. Um, but we can come back to the home and we see our configuration has been imported.
I only have till 45 or till 15. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to have to skip the second example because I want to show you the tips and tricks. Um, any questions yet? Yeah. So um, when you do that import, I assume it does a clear cache? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Or you, you don't have to do that. Actually, let me, you know what, I'm going to burn, no, you don't have to, you normally don't have to do that. Let me burn through the second example just super fast here because it kind of, it illustrates a really important point. Let me come here and let me, I'm just going to, this might put us over by a minute or two, but I'm just going to add a field. I'm on the, the remote site. I'm going to add just a field here. You know, I'll even, I'll just, I'll make it even simpler. I'll just modify this field. I'll say, here is some um, help test. Okay, so here's a change where we're not following our process. We're making it directly on a remote environment. We're not making a change on our local. All right, so this is a change that, you know, probably shouldn't be making here. Should, you know, and we're going to pay for it in a second. So now on a remote site, we've got a configuration change hanging out there in space. But forget about that for a second. That was some other developer. That wasn't us. <laughs> we're doing the right thing. Well, we're mostly doing the right thing. You know, here we are on our local site. You know, we've done our git pull. We're up to date with code. We've re reloaded this page. Our config is up to date. So we have a clear conscience about starting our task. And, you know, maybe our task is let's just create a new vocabulary. All right, and, you know, let's say there's 30 and other things, but this will be representative. So we come to our config sync. We clearly have a new configuration. We're going to, you know, we've learned configuration management. We're doing the right thing. We come here. We do a uh, fin drush config export. Yes, we want to create we we'll to create a new configuration. We do our git status. We do our git add. We do our git commit. We do our git push. So we're doing all the right things. And then, so over here on our local, we're good, we've got our new vocabulary, we've done our job. So now, <clears throat> we come over to our dev site and we wanna pull that change into our remote site. So, you know, we kinda of follow the thing here. Let's pull it in, you know, do our config import. So we go to our remote site command line, we do a git fetch bad camp. Oh, I should spell it right. We do a git rebase that camp master. All right, so before we do anything else now, you know, we want to do the right thing here. So we come to the remote site and we do a reload on the sync page. <clears throat> and now we see that we've got one, you know, what happens when we hit import all? This is the way these adjectives, I think they're adjectives, no. New, I guess they're adjectives, right? New configs, change configs. The best way to understand what the word new, the word change, and the other one that you might see is removed means is to put them in the sentence of, um, when I import all from config, I will have one new config. And I will have one changed config. So this will definitely be brought in, because this is a new one. So there's nothing inactive about this vocab, about this config, but there's everything on stage because we just pushed it up. But this is going to be the interesting one because when we do a config import, we're importing what's on the state, what's in the sync directory to active. Well, someone's made a change in this environment. This is a change, but we're about to override it. We're about to basically do our import, and this change is going to go poof. In this case, it's help text. Not a big deal. In another case, it might be a view that someone labored, you know, 38 hours over and, you know, several, you know, well, we'll just leave it at that, that they labored over. It's real easy to, to do this stuff, to, to override it.
So I'm gonna override it, but we'll talk about how to avoid that while I do that. So I'm gonna use this button just for, for time here. The way to avoid it is as part of your process, and this is kind of the base level you know, process. It's part of your process. Before you do a config import, um, or even before you pull in new config from the repo, or if you're on a small enough team, you know, what I suggest is before you start working on your task, go to production, go to stage, go to dev, see if there's any outstanding config hanging out there in space. If there is, someone else probably screwed up or there's a gap in your process. If there's config hanging out in space, before you do anything else, number one, find out if that's real config you need to keep and not just someone messing around. And not messing around bad way, but like testing something. But if it is config you want to keep, export it to me. You have to, when you're working on your local with config, you have to make sure your baseline is clean. And the best way to do that is to make sure dev, stage, production is clean. On a small team, that's relatively easy. If you're on a big team of developers, you could probably need a more robust process. <clears throat> so we've done the import, and I think it was the, the help text, right, of this one. Let's see, it's going to be gone. Yeah, so no help text. OK, I know I'm over, so let me finish up with my tips and tricks here, and we'll get out of here. There we go. Okay, so I, 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 well, I was hoping to, to, to mention this. If you're starting out with configuration management and you can get away with it with your organization slash client, this module, config read only, makes it so that on your production environment or your dev or your stage, you cannot save configuration. That means you cannot go and add a field on production. It literally, that form, the submit button is grayed out. So what does this do? This makes it so, this, this is like the process enforcer. If you enable this on remote environments, the only place configuration changes can be made is on your local. And then you've completely eliminated the risk of overriding configuration in remote environments. It's easy to set up. I use it with every client that I can convince it's in their best interest. And I, I honestly, I skip with the preamble and I go right to how much money it's going to save them in my time. So, um, really solid module. Um, if you're not using that and config changes are made in a live environment, I don't care if it's you or someone who do, who's not a developer who doesn't really you know, know how to use Git, there needs to be a process in place that Either someone is checking the configuration periodically on the live site and, and getting it in, into the repo, or when someone does make a change, there's a, a process that kicks off, a ticket is open or something. Leaving configuration hanging out in space on production you know, should feel at some point like an untracked change in Git. Right? When you do a Git status and you see a change that you haven't admin committed yet. It should be that type of small worry in your being that you should do something. <clears throat> Before working in your local, you know, we should all be used to, you know, doing git pull, getting our code set. Well, if you're using D8 config system, you need to have a new process in your head there, and that not only do you want your code sync, but you want your config sync before you start working. Um, when you're working with multiple branches, it's very similar. When you switch branches, you know, you're refreshing your code, so to speak. You also have to make sure that your config is synced. So you do your git pull. You know, these days, you know, I'm so, so wired in my head, I do, I do uh, you know, git checkout feature branch, drush CIM. So any config in that feature branch, I, put, I get in the database immediately. So git checkouts followed by a drush CIM you know, will start, should start to go hand in hand to keep things synced. Um, I mentioned this one about using the word config and commit messages. You know, I think it's just handy. Um, the yellow text <laughs> on the config sync page will say less than helpful. That's the nicest thing I can say about it. Um, and that's it. Okay, so five minutes over. I'm sorry. I'll be around in the hall or if anyone wants to ask questions. Um, 
Okay. Tap. Yes. I will put the slides up immediately. Um, I do want to mention there is a, another configuration system session that's more intermediate. It's about automating all of this. It's tomorrow. I don't know what time it's at. 1.30. Tomorrow, 1.30. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the, the second half of this. All right. Thanks. Have a good day.